Hello everyone, my name is Colin Blenis. I wanted to record a brief tutorial for you on ultrasound guided peripheral IV access. Establishing venous access is one of the most common procedures that nurses perform in any emergency or critical care setting. It's also a high priority intervention among our critically ill and decompensating patients. Unfortunately, patients who need IV access the most are often the most challenging to cannulate. This is a brief tutorial on some essential concepts you need to know before getting your hands on an ultrasound probe and practicing. By no means will you be an expert on ultrasounds or ultrasound IVs at the end of this video. Physicians get entire fellowships on ultrasound, books are written on it. This is just to cover the basics and introduce you to the idea. So why ultrasound IVs? Well, many of our patients are difficult to get IV access on, whether they are obese, whether they are cancer patients, sickle cell patients, patients who are former IV drug users, patients who have low blood pressure. There are many reasons a patient would be difficult to cannulate with traditional methods. Ultrasound-guided peripheral IV access is also associated with a marked reduction in central venous catheter use in non-critically ill patients. That represents a financial savings both for hospitals and patients. It's also less invasive and associated with less risk of infection. I also want to note that the Emergency Nurses Association has a clinical practice guideline for difficult intravenous access that says that ultrasound-guided IVs are of high level of evidence, that nurses, physicians, ED techs, anyone working in the emergency room essentially can learn how to insert an IV under ultrasound guidance. So learning objectives for this video is to understand the basic physics of ultrasound for IV access, describe the technique for obtaining access with ultrasound, to be able to identify veins, arteries, and nerves, and to identify patient populations most likely to benefit from ultrasound-guided IV techniques. Ultrasound physics. We are not getting complicated here. Basically, what I want you to know is that ultrasound are sound waves that are emitted at a very high frequency that we are not able to hear. Think about bats using sonar to echolocate and find where they're going by emitting sound waves. The ultrasound probe is essentially a little bat that is constantly emitting high frequency sounds. The sounds then bounce off tissues, reflect back to the probe, and the probe and the computer interpret that as an image. It's also important to know your anatomy. Not gonna cover that in a lot of detail here, but this graphic here shows some of the larger vessels in the upper extremity. It doesn't show any arteries, just veins, but I want you to note how nerves and veins often run together. It's also good before you pick up an ultrasound just to review your vascular anatomy. It will help you when you are searching for a vein. All right, you also want to be oriented to the probe. There are many different kinds of ultrasound transducers. The one here on the screen is an example of the one that you will most likely be using to gain access to veins in the arm. You also want to note that there is a probe indicator here. By convention, that probe indicator corresponds to the left side of the screen. You're going to want the probe indicator facing towards you to your left hand that's going to make it most easy for you to match up what you're seeing on the screen to what's going on in the arm. If you flip it around, it will feel like you're working in a mirror, and that is not fun at all. If that is not clear, don't worry. It will make much more sense when you have a probe in your hand and you're practicing on a model. All right, so I always tell patients that I'm essentially looking for black holes on the screen. What I want you to get out of this little image here is that as you slide the probe up and down the arm, you're holding the probe perpendicular to the lie of the vein, and that will correspond to a circle on the screen. You can also rotate the probe so that the probe is parallel to the veins, and that changes how it looks on the screen. Arteries, veins, and nerves. There are a lot of things that you can look at with an ultrasound. 
many different tif- tissue types can be differentiated with an ultrasound. But what you need to know for ultrasound guided PIV access is arteries, veins, and nerves. Like I said, we're looking for black holes. So you find a black hole, that means you're likely looking at either an artery or a vein. The way you tell the difference is that arteries are higher pressure, they're pulsatile, they are difficult to compress. Veins, lower pressure, non-pulsatile, easier to compress. In general, an artery is going to appear more circular, a vein is going to appear more like an oval. Nerves are sometimes described as honeycomb in appearance. I don't really see that, but in any case, it is also non-compressible and non-pulsatile. And you can see on the screen here, the circle in yellow is a nerve, the blue circles are veins, and the red is an artery. Getting a little ahead of myself here, but when you go to advance the needle underneath the probe, the needle reflects the sound waves being emitted by the probe, and it will appear as a little white dot. You never want to lose track of the little white dot. Basically, ultrasound IVs are a video game where you are trying to get the little white dot into the big black hole. So the image on the screen here shows the little white dot inside the vein. B is the transverse view, like we saw before in the image. Cannulation technique. This is really the hard part. It is pretty simple to describe, but like any kind of psychomotor skill, you really need to have hands-on practice to be competent in doing this. So I don't recommend just watching this video and going and trying to use an ultrasound to get an IV on a real live human being. You want to try to do it first on a model. Even though those models have perfect veins that never exist in a real patient, you want to get the motor skills down. Now, there's a lot that could be said about ultrasound technique. I want to try to explain it in 60 seconds. So this is your machine. You're going to have the ultrasound probe with the left part of the probe corresponding to the left part of the screen. You can use a sterile probe cover that is standard, but they're bulky and expensive. Sterile glove works too, but Tegaderm is probably the most commonly used. Lube as jelly is cheap and readily available. You're going to use distal to proximal technique to identify veins and arteries. Remember, arteries are pulsatile and non-compressible. Veins are easy to compress, non-pulsatile. Deeper is better for getting access to the deeper veins. It's basic geometry. And then you see here the white dot corresponds to the needle, and it is inside the vein. Once I get access to the vein, I decrease my angle and advance the catheter. Okay, so to recap briefly, you want to put a sterile probe cover on the ultrasound probe. This is not a sterile technique, but you are attempting to prevent contamination of the ultrasound probe itself. You also want to prep the area that you anticipate cannulating with CHD, just as you would any other typical IV stick. Next, you're going to apply jelly to the site, put the probe on the skin, and you are going to begin your search. I recommend going from distal to proximal. Patients who are difficult sticks, like dialysis patients, it's better to reserve veins of the upper arm in case they need to be harvested later for grafts. So it's better to start low and work your way up. Really, anything lower than the mid forearm is probably going to be too shallow to even need an ultrasound, so I recommend starting in the mid forearm or up. It's also important to note not only your target vein, but any surrounding structures. You want to know if you are going to be near an artery or, or a nerve. Not that that is a contraindication, but it's something that you want to be aware of and take steps to avoid. Then you're really going to prep the patient as you would for a conventional IV. Tourniquet, position of comfort, all that good stuff. Next, you insert the needle underneath the probe. And once you locate the needle tip underneath the probe, you're going to stop looking at your hands. And this is the hardest part for new people to learn. You're going to stop looking at your hands and you're going to watch the screen. After locating the needle tip and looking at the screen, you advance the needle and probe together while you visualize the little white dot enter the vein. Okay, a couple of 
Little review questions. The nurse recognizes an artery on the ultrasound because A, it's non-compressible, B, it's non-pulsatile, C, compressible, D, pulsatile, or E, honeycomb in appearance. And the answer is A and D, non-compressible, pulsatile. The nurses recognize a vein on the ultrasound because, again, non-compressible, non-pulsatile, compressible, pulsatile, or honeycomb appearance. The answer is B and C, non-pulsatile and compressible. Now what about nerves? Nerves, they are A, B, and E, non-compressible, non-pulsatile, and honeycomb in appearance. So which of these patients will likely benefit from an ultrasound IV insertion? Patients with end-stage renal disease, current former IV drug users, oncology patients, patients who are obese, patients with sickle cell disease. And the answer is F, all of the above. Now, which of the following are true of ultrasound IV technique? A, this is a sterile procedure. B, the needle should be inserted at a steeper angle than conventional. C, you should watch the screen, not your hands. D, the needle will appear as a white dot. And E, sterile jelly should be applied to the skin. The answer is everything except A. Sterile jelly is important. You want to use the sterile jelly packets, not the big bottles of jelly that are used for diagnostic procedures. Those things can grow bacteria like pseudomonas, and you don't want to be inoculating your patient with pseudomonas. So stick with the sterile jelly packets. That really concludes this tutorial. I hope it was helpful. I hope that you can take some of this into your practice. Introducing ultrasound guided IV to your nursing staff will be a great way to improve their practice, improve patient outcomes and satisfaction, and contribute to better healthcare. Thank you.